What's up everybody, this is Reese from Steam Manga and welcome to my review of Hajime no Ippo Chapter 1089, Sendo's True Weapon. So the fight between Sendo and Nago continues with everyone kind of like still watching the same motions basically, you know, Nago's stupid hit and run tactic where he goes in for his few hits and then basically just gets the hell out of there before Sendo can react to him and basically give him a smash to the face. So anyway, a few things that really stood out to me in this chapter was obviously the first one where Nago saying, oh, because he's training with like the best of the best, you know, the strongest man in the world, aka Ricardo Martinez, that he has nothing in Japan to fear, you know, for him, there's nothing in Japan for him to fear, basically. And right there, that is a stupid, stupid statement because I can think of three. One of them is standing right in front of him, obviously Sendo. The other two are Miata and Ippo. It's like, we all know why he should be fearing Miata because, come on, like... Miata, he would never ever put up any of this hit and run bullshit. He would literally just go like, what the hell are you trying to do? A couple of dodges and blam, Jolt Counter uses his friggin' eagle vision. It's like, Miata just, he doesn't miss nothing, you know? He will basically Jolt Counter crap out of him and he's done. Miata, the king of counters. Um, obviously with Ippo, we all know why about Ippo. It's like even Ricardo Martinez himself was pretty much like intrigued with him after he saw the Dempsey roll in their little spa. So heck, he even told what's it, Alfredo Gonzalez in the last, just before the, you know, the last match, it's like, yeah, don't like take him lightly, you know, be wary of him, he's something. You know, so obviously we know that Ippo is like a dangerous guy, he just needs to kind of like get his head out of his ass type thing, you know, just get his head back into the fray. And finally, you know, I think Sendo demonstrated exactly why he should be feared in this chapter alone. <laughs> so yeah, second thing is one which actually did make me laugh quite a bit. Um, it's like we all know like, you know, Sendo's usual style is to dash in. Um, it's like one of my favourite parts in some of the old animes in like, you know, one of the first series is the first season of the anime, um, where you had Sendo versus Ippo and like, you know, Sendo's little fights when he was champion. It's like the dashing sound that he did, you know, after obviously you see his like his legs start compressing, his muscles start expanding, you just hear that kind of like engine start up noise or something, and next thing you just see him go blam straight in, you see his head rise up really slow motion, I'm like, Oh my god, what the hell he's so quick? And then you obviously get like Sendo steam music, it's like ah such good memories with that meet with that. But anyway, yeah, like I said, we haven't really seen too much of that in this fight here. Um, and, well, we actually find out the reason for it. The reason being, um, obviously, the stupid little spat he had with Mashima beforehand, before the match, did, a heck, did actually a lot more damage than he was letting on. It's like, as his coach said, um, during the match, he was obviously thinking, OK, this shouldn't be too bad, you know, just keep the guy at bay for a bit, have some recovery time, and then, obviously, you know, get back to it. But the fact that during the fight he's been constantly hit, it's kind of like obviously been building up, taking its toll. So yeah, his legs aren't exactly the greatest right now. So final thing is obviously Sender's counter attack in this chapter. He did his usual thing of, you know, like putting up his arms like, yeah, come at me, bro. His basic style of just like, you know, inviting Nago to come in and hit him. And this is what I really love about Sendo. You know, the fact is that when he's backed into a corner, his animal instincts truly do come out. And, you know, it's, it's just this wild swing. So everyone's like, oh my God. He's just swinging wildly, he's swinging wildly, but somehow they always seem to connect. I don't know how he does it, it's just like, obviously as Mushroom said, it's instinct. He instinctively knows where his enemy is going to be and just attacks in that position. It's like, it's like, oh my god, he's just wildly swinging, he doesn't know what he's doing, but no. Those hits are coming in accurately and from who knows where. So yeah, um, obviously this is like the final part with Nago, basically he ended up just like, being backed into that corner, having no choice but to go for the clinch to try and avoid a full-on smash. But that kind of backfired with Sendo basically landing a blow at the end of this chapter. So, it's a weird one actually, it's kind of like, how the hell did he do that? It's like, has he finally learned something that, you know, one of Ippo's little moves where he's basically able to like, put his full body weight behind like, them tiny little super close quarters fights. Um, obviously only the next chapter will be able to tell, which hopefully you guys, which, you know, thankfully you guys ain't got to wait long for because yeah, three chapters finally came out, finally going to be catching up with, the, with like where it is in Japan, so yeah, expect the next review soon guys. Um, so yeah, you know the usual things to do at the end of these. Let me know what you thought about this chapter in the comment section below. And as usual, don't forget to check out everything to do on the channel. So I'll see you next time.